Hey everybody, Mr. Bowman here. In this video, we're looking at 2.6 algebraic methods, and in particular, we're focusing on all the achieved questions from the 2021 exam. Now, question 30 from the website link. Check the comments if you haven't seen the website links. So question 30, um, we've been asked simply to simplify the expression over here, and be cautious, it's asked for positive indices only. Um, so let's jot down my expression. So we're going to have 3y to the power of 4, and all of that is over 3 to the power of negative 1. Um, so I'm seeing a few red flags already. I know students typically are going to do a mistake, which I'll highlight soon. So first step is let's simplify this top here. Um, we're going to simplify that by going 3 to the power of 4, and that's going to be multiplied by y to the power of 4. So that we've expanded the bracket. That 4 is hitting both the 3 and the y is what's happening there. That is going to be divided by 3 to the power of negative Sorry, 3y to the power of negative 1. I'm now going to do two things at the same step here. So this 3 to the power of 4 is going to become 81. You can do that on your calculator if you're not sure where I got that from. And that's going to be y to the power of negative 4. The next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to move this y to the power of negative 1. I'm going to move it to my numerator. And by switching it to the other side of the fraction line, it goes from a negative power to a positive power. So that power changes from negative to positive. So that's going to become y to the power of 1, and all of that is over 3. I just want to note a really common mistake I see is people often drag the 3 up with the y, but just a reminder, that negative 1 only relates to y. This 3 has its own power of 1, currently invisible, but that negative 1 does not attach to the 3 over there. So now that I've done this, I'm going to simplify. I've got two things I need to do. I need to do the division, 8, 81 divided by 3, and I need to merge the y's together. I've got 5 there in total. So as I said, 81 divided by 3, that's going to be 27. And the y's together, that comes to y to the power of 5. So I'm now on question number 31. And again, we're asked to simplify the instructions for the previous question. And we've got the cube root of 8 to the power, or 8y to the power of 27. So we've got the cube root of 8y to the power of 27. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up into two parts. So this is actually going to be equal to the cube root of 8 multiplied by the cube root of y to the power of 27. And the cube root of 8, that's actually really, really easy to do. That's going to be 2, right? Because 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 8. Um, the next part here is going to be times. This one here is a bit trickier to do, but I know the cube root is the same as a one-third power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do y to the power of 27 and all of that is the power of one third, representing the cube root. And because I've got a bracket, I know I just need to multiply the two powers together. So that's going to become 2y to the power of 9. I'm now on to question number 32. Down the bottom there, I've got a quadratic fraction, and I've been asked to simplify that. So let's jot down my expression. So I've got x squared minus x minus 12, and that is divided by 4. Um, I've written a bracket there, but 4x plus 12. So when you're dealing with quadratic fractions like this, you need factors to be able to cancel. Um, so, for, so for example, you can't cancel, can't cancel out these 12s because that's addition and subtraction. They're not multiplication. They're not factors. So what I need to do is I need to factorize the top and factorize the bottom. So these um, are fairly straightforward ones to factorize, which is nice. So we need to think what adds to minus 1 multiplies to negative 12. So adds to that multiplies to that. Hopefully you're thinking negative 4 and positive 3. So that means my brackets are going to be x minus 4, and then we've got x plus 3. Down the bottom here, I need to factorize that as well. So that's not a quadratic, and they've got a 4 in common. So that's going to be 4 bracket x plus 3. And I'm liking what I see here because I can see a common bracket on the top and the bottom. So these brackets are actually going to divide and cancel each other out. So that means when I simplify this, it's going to be x minus 4, and all of that is divided by 4. We are now on to question number 33 from the website up the top there. We've got a whole bunch of information, but down the bottom is where it's relevant. So we've got this new cuboid. So he's changed some dimensions of the cube to make this new cuboid. And we've been asked... Um, using algebra, find the volume of this cuboid. So we're not actually given any information, so we can't come up with the, the volume in terms of a number, but we can come up with the volume in terms of an expression. 
So we know the volume of this cuboid. Volume of cuboid. Um, forgive my spelling, I'm a horrific speller, but there you go. Volume of cuboid, I think I got it right. That's going to be equal to base times height times length of that cuboid. So the three dimensions. So we've got P divided by 2, 2P, and P as the three numbers. So that's going to be equal to P over 2 times 2P times P. So because we've got a fraction involved at the front, um, all of these here are going to be considered to be fractions as well. So we're going to go over 1, over 1. And because we're multiplying fractions together, we need to multiply all of the tops together to be the top. And then we're going to do the same with the bottoms as well. So top times top times top, that's going to be 2P cubed. And then I'm going to multiply all the bottoms together to get to 2. And then 2's cancel, leaving me with P cubed. So the volume of this cuboid is actually the same as the volume of the cube that we had earlier. We are now on to question number 34 from that website link. So there's 34, similar to the cuboid one before, but basically we've got the volume of the cuboid as shown by this expression. We've been asked to expand and simplify this expression. So basically this is just expand triple brackets. So let's write down my expression. So it's going to be P minus 4 times P plus 5 times P minus 3. So when I approach these triple bracket questions, what I like to do is I like to expand the first two, which means I completely ignore this one to start off with, and then later on I'll consider that with my expanding. So let's get into that. So we're going to do this one here, P times P. So this is forming a new bracket, so P squared, and then it's going to be plus 5P, and along the bottom it's going to be minus 4P, and then along the bottom again it'll be minus 20. And all of that is being multiplied by the one we didn't look at, which is P minus 3. So let's simplify the middle. So that's going to be P squared plus P minus 20. And that there is going to be times by the second bracket. And we're now going to expand this. This one's just going to get a bit messy. So we're going to start off with by doing this one times this one. So we're dealing with that P squared first. That's going to become P cubed minus 3P squared. I'm now going to repeat the same with the P, so I'm going to go there, P times P, and then P times negative 3. So that's going to be plus P squared minus 3P. I'm then going to finish off with the minus 20, so minus 20 times P, and then minus 20 times 3. So that's going to be minus 20P plus 60. Just noting we had a negative times a negative giving us a positive answer. So we've expanded, now need to simplify, so P cubed stays the same. We've got some p squareds here. That's going to become minus 2p cubed. We've got the p's over here. That's, that's minus 23p. And then finally, plus 60. So that wraps up all of the achieved questions from the 2021 video. Um, hopefully you found it really, really helpful. If you're stuck on any questions, comment below and I'll be able to reply with some extra resources.